In this video, I'm going to show you how to use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to generate leads using its four main features, which are the lead search, the saved searches, lead list, and the alerts on lead activities. I will also show you advanced techniques like LinkedIn Boolean search and the six Sales Navigator rookie mistakes you should avoid when you start using the tool. So I hope you are excited for this one, guys. Let's jump into it. To start using LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you have a 30-day free trial. And once you have that set up, you have an icon here, Sales Nav. If you click on it, you are going to open Sales Navigator homepage. And the first feature we want to check here is the lead search. So to access it, you can click on lead filters here. And on your left, you're going to have all the filters available to dig into LinkedIn database. So in the next part of this video, I will explain how every single filter works. But for now, I'll just make a quick example. Like if I'm looking for like head of sales in small companies, I can select company ranges here. I can also select the geography, like let's select San Francisco Bay Area, for example. And I can even select some schools, industries, etc. And here LinkedIn tells me that 356 people fit my search criteria. So once I am happy with my search results, there is two things I can do. So first I can save this search to get notified every time new people fit my search criteria. So for example, if next week there is a new head of sales in a startup in San Francisco, I will get notified by LinkedIn. So for that, I can click on save chat here and name a search so here, head of sales. Startup SF, for example, and then I will have access to my save searches by clicking on save searches here. So I can now see my search here, and here you can see previous lead searches that I've made on LinkedIn. And here LinkedIn tells me that there is like 450 new fresh leads I can contact. And if I click on it, I will have all these new leads here displayed on the LinkedIn interface. And this is really comfortable guys, because you can get literally in front of your computer every Monday and LinkedIn will give you new fresh lead that match your ideal customer profile. So this feature basically allows you to put your lead generation on autopilot. And that's a really cool thing if you want to save time and automate your work. The second thing you can do when you are happy with your search results is to create a lead list. So for that, you can unpick some leads by ticking the checkboxes here, or you can select all the leads on the page by clicking here. After that, you click on save to lists plus, and you can name your list at sales, and stuff like this. And then you will be able to access these leads with the lead lists tab. So here you can see that I have my head of sales that are stored here in this lead list. So there is like filters I can apply to my list, like, like if these people change up recently, if they posted on LinkedIn or if they share experiences with me, so schools or company. And I can like uh, visit the profile, visit the company page, add some notes on the leads and also send connection requests directly from LinkedIn Sales Navigator and also send messages which are emails. So when you are subscribed to Sales Navigator, you get 50 emails a month and emails allow you to contact people without sending a connection request first. But you know, 50 messages per month is obviously a really low amount and it's much better to get the emails of these prospects to contact them directly. So make sure to watch this video till the end because I will show you at the end of this video how to get the emails of all these prospects in just one click. For now, let's get back to our lead list. And the really cool thing about lead list is that you get notified about all the LinkedIn activities of the people inside your list. So if I go back on the Sales Navigator homepage and I can see some alerts. And if I click on lead alerts here, I can see that, for example, Tora shared a post, Costa shared a post, and I can like view the post here, like the post, comment the post, and even send a message directly to my prospect. And this is a really great way to break the ice with your potential customer and to send follow-ups 
for your prospecting campaigns. You can totally send messages like, oh, just saw your latest post on this achievement, congratulations, etc. This is a great way, you know, to make a first contact with your prospect or to send follow up to relaunch a previous conversation. So these are basically the four main sales navigator features that will allow you to generate leads. That's where your money goes. And in terms of pricing, sales navigator has three offers, core, advanced and advanced plus which were formerly named professional, team, and enterprise. And 99% of you guys will do just fine with the core version. Maybe some of you will need the advanced version. And for that, I've made a video where I compare Sales Navigator Core and Sales Navigator Advanced so you can see which one is the best option for your business. But for this tutorial, I will focus on Sales Navigator Core as it contains 99% of the features you need for lead generation. So you can see that the core version is at $99 a month. And if you decide to pay annually, you can 25% discount. Okay, so now that you get the big picture, I will now dive into the details and show you how every search filter works so you can master 100% of the sales navigator lead search. And I will also show you how to use LinkedIn Boolean search, which is an advanced technique to build super qualified lead lists. Let's dive in. Uh, first category, so you got company, role, spotlight, personal workflow, etc. And here, first filter is current company, so really simple. You can look for companies here and you can also look for past company. This can be useful if you are looking for alumni. Let's say you write uh, the name of your company in past company and your, the targeted account in current company, and you can detect if there is some alumni of your company in this company and that um, you know could be a good entry point for uh, to generate leads in this account so that's a way to use it uh, company headcount you can decide on the site so you can decide exactly the number of employees but linkedin give you some some ranges so here 11 to 50 51 to 200 etc so you can select the one that interests you like this. Company type, so you can select to target public companies, privately held, non-profit, educational partnership, etc. So most of you guys will uh, obviously target privately held. Company headquarters, so here this is the location of the company, which is different from geography, which is the location of the lead, you know. And if I go back on my profile, you know they got a location for here, the company and a location, you know, for me. These are two different things. So especially with a remote work right now, you know, people can work in a country and the company can be in another country though. So that's it for the company category. Then after that, we got a role and function. So here, if you click here, LinkedIn will like uh, propose some like categories of jobs like uh, sales, marketing, human resources, consulting, etc. And for that, LinkedIn is using some kind of AI algorithm to guess your function with your job title. So for example, if your title is head of sales, LinkedIn will analyze the title and say, oh, okay, head of sales, the function is sales. But the thing is, um, there is some problem with this filter because obviously, you know, algorithm make mistakes all the time, especially when there is a lot, a lot of data like this. So using this filter is for me rookie mistake number one you shouldn't use the function filter because it's too messy and the algorithm take unpredictable decision. And I will show you examples right now. So if I select here, like, you know, sales and I like check the results and I will check not the first page because, you know, LinkedIn is putting the, the best result forward, obviously. Okay. So here I'm on page eight. And if I scroll into the results, I got here president and COO. So it's not obviously a salesperson, uh, vice president and senior talent consultant. So this not uh, seems to be related to sales. Uh, okay, so this one seems good. And director strategic partnership and alliances. So this is not for me like closely, closely related to sales uh, as well. So you can see that if you use uh, the function filter, you expose yourself to uh, had you know irrelevant leads in your search results. 
And today you don't want to, you know, to contact uh, people saying like, hey, I see you are working in sales and the, the person is not working in sales at all. You know, it's bad for your credibility, the credibility of your sales and the credibility of your business. You know, and the, the second reason why uh, I advise to not use the function filter because the function is written in the, in the job title, you know, <laughs> like if I'm targeting head of sales, I don't need to like tell LinkedIn I want people that have sales as a function because you know the function is written in the job title itself. And that's the second filter we are going to cover here is job title. So here, so you can write any job title you want. And a really important thing to know is that uh, you can either write job title yourself or select a suggestion from LinkedIn. But this will not give the same results. So here, for example, let's see a quick example. If I select the LinkedIn suggestion here, LinkedIn will give me head of sales and all the job titles that are closely related to head of sales. Like here, so I'm on the first page. So I got head of sales, head of sales. But here you can see I have VP of sales. And if I scroll down a little bit, no, I can see that here, same thing, EMEA sales director. So this is not exactly head of sales. So if you want like an exact job title, you need to write um, the title yourself like this, and you will be able to see that if I write head of sales here between quotes, all the results will be head of sales. So let's just control plus F here. And you can see every person here has written like exactly head of sales on their job title. So yeah, first thing to know is that there is a difference between writing and pressing enter and selecting a LinkedIn suggestion. If you are selecting a LinkedIn suggestion, you are allowing LinkedIn to like expand your search and show you closely related job titles. You can also exclude some job titles. So here, let's say I want the head of sales, but I, for some reason, I don't want the VP of sales, you know, I can here. So select suggestion or presenter and I can presenter and click here on the sign to exclude the VP of sales and another way to do it. No, is to exclude it by clicking on the exclude here. So if there is some type, some job titles you absolutely don't want in your search results, you can exclude them so you won't see them. So this is basically how you use the job title filter, but trusting the job title filter blindly is for me rookie mistake number two, because when you are using the job title filter, LinkedIn will basically show you every people that uh, have added this job title as a current experience. The thing is there is many people that don't update their profile correctly on LinkedIn. So they will let um, past experience as current on LinkedIn. So for example, if I was a head of sales like five years ago and I haven't updated my profile and now I'm like head of HR and if there is written like present experience, um, this person will come out in the search results. So I will now show you really concrete example of that. Okay. So here I have selected some profiles. I found in my search that because LinkedIn thought they were head of sales, but there wasn't head of sales anymore. So the first use case here is when you had several experiences into the same company. So LinkedIn will basically search each time there is like present written on the, on the, on the job experience, LinkedIn will consider it as current and then we'll search into the field with the job title filter here. But you can see that here, this position is five years ago, you know, and this person just, uh, has been promoted as a COO. So not a, not a head of sales anymore. Now a CEO, but he's coming out on a search for head of sales because there is still written present here and the person has not correctly updated um, his profile. So this is the first use case. The second use case in when you, you get like two, um, two experiences into two separate companies. So here you can see that this person was a head of sales at one company like six years ago. 
and now has created a new company. So not a head of sales anymore. Now like a founder and now uh, support. Okay. So here you can see again the present here. And that's why LinkedIn has added this profile into the search result because there is written head of sales here and the experience is present, but you know, not a head of sales anymore. And you can see that this is a problem for LinkedIn and LinkedIn is fighting that because you can see on your profile, LinkedIn is asking like, is your current title at Boot is still co-founder and growth? And LinkedIn asks you to confirm your current position so they can like update, you know, your profile for you and avoid this kind of mistakes. You know, that's why you will find sometimes in your search results on LinkedIn people that are thought completely irrelevant and you will say like, like, why is this person in my search results? You know, and that's because of the multiple present experience problem. You, so you will need to filter this list manually, but at the end of this video, I will show you how Everboot can help you automate this process and automatically double check all your leads and completely eliminates the multiple experience problem. The job title filter is also somewhere where you can use the Boolean search. So I will stop the filter overview a little bit right now to explain what Boolean search is. This is a strange word, but don't worry, this is really simple. Basically, Boolean search is a really simple programmatic language that you can use on Sales Navigator to build really targeted lead lists. It works with the logical connectors and, or, and not, and with punctuation, parentheses, and quotes. And knowing how to use Boolean search will really put you into the top 5% of the Sales Navigator users because most people that are using Sales Navigator don't even know how to properly use that and this makes a huge difference in the quality of the search results. Okay, so let's start with quotes. So quotes will basically help you to look for an exact sentence or an exact expression and that's why when I used uh, the job title filter earlier, I put head of sales between quotation marks, you know, because that allowed me to look exactly for head of sales and not like head of marketing and sales, you know, I want like exactly these three words. Okay, so let's take an example with like agile coach, which is a, a new job in tech for product. And let's go to like page number six, because LinkedIn always give you the best result in the first page. Make sure to check the other pages because that's where the mess is. <laughs> and if I like control F here, you can see that here I have agile delivery manager, coach agile. So the word are reversed. Uh, agile executive coach. So there is a word between agile and coach, you know, um, okay, now, so let's write agile coach between quotes and you will see that I will have exactly, so agile coach written for everyone. So let's take like page four. So let's the result load and like control F here. And you can see that for everyone here, I need to up, we do it like this. There is agile coach written and, but. And this is where we found the, the multiple present experience problem. If I click here, you'll be able to see that I have a present experience, which is not the last with agile coach here. So here we see the multiple current experience problem again, you know, so this will look into the job titles you can like see here, but also the job title that you can see directly on the search, but are marked as present here. So you can see that here there is present and agile coach is written here. So LinkedIn thinks it's a good result. And this could be true because like these people work in two companies or is a freelancer or it could be a wrong uh, lead because uh, it has forgotten to, to update uh, his profile correctly. You know. Next we have not. So not will allow you to exclude some keywords from your search. So here I've looked for uh, CEOs in Los Angeles in small companies and here I have 2000 results. So now let's copy paste chief executive officer and add not 
assistant because you could have written, you know, chief executive officer on your job title, but CEO assistant. So, okay, you have CEO written on your job title, but you have also assistant. So it's totally two different kind of people. And if you are selling product or services, obviously you don't want to, to speak to the assistant of the CEO. You want to speak to the CEO, especially in small companies where CEOs are decision makers. So if I here write chief executive officer, not assistant. So here you can see I've eliminated 500 assistant of CEO and I have, you know, 1500 results here. So I have excluded 500 profiles. So this can be really useful if when you are writing some job title, you have like assistant, interns or consultant or freelancers, etc. You can use the not here to exclude these people. And if you have like a blacklist of keywords, you know, you can write your keyword, your first keyword here, and then add not first keyword, not second keyword extra, so not assistant, not freelancer, not uh, intern, etc. And I'll all the keywords of your blacklist uh, like that. And then we have or, and all will allow you to search for profiles that have at least one keyword in their profile. So for example, if I'm looking, so if I have a, like a list of job titles, I want to target like head of sales, head of marketing, head of operation, I can totally like write, go to the job title filter and write head of marketing. So between quotes, because there were several words or head of sales or VP sales. Like, you know, all the job titles you want to target. So you may have a list of job titles you want to target and you can just add quotes and whore between them. So I've just lost everything I've written. So I will cut the video and reboot it. <laughs> okay, so back with the magic of video editing. So here, head of set, come on, man, come on. <laughs> okay, so this is a huge problem, guys. And the fact that I have this problem right now is really important because actually what you should do when you are doing Boolean search is to, you know, go on like Google Doc or something and write your Boolean outside of Sales Navigator because you can see that the field is really tiny and if you close it, you will lose everything you have written. So this is really frustrating. You uh, just witness it. And um, so the pro tip here I give you is to work, uh, is to write your, your Boolean outside of Sales Navigator and then copy paste it into Sales Navigator after that. So here, uh, you can write either sales or marketing or VP sales and or can also be used for alternate spellings. Like if you are looking for CEOs, you want to write CEO or chief executive officer. Here I'm writing VP. So I wrote, uh, you know, VP sales or vice president of sales or maybe with a dash and LinkedIn will not like add the dash itself. You need to, you need to add it yourself. So here, when I have several orthographies for one job title, like e-commerce uh, with uh, with the dash, without the dash, etc., I can add it like this. I should add it like this. So here, vice president of sales, vice president of sales, and then copy paste here my boolean into uh, sales navigator. And here you will be able to see all the different job titles will be present in uh, the search results. So here VP sales, vice president sales, head of marketing, VP sales, vice president of sales, etc. head of marketing. So, <coughs> so all the job titles that I, I'm targeting here are present in the search results here. So if you have a, a list of job titles you want to target, just add or between them and then copy paste this into Sales Navigator and don't forget to add the different orthographies for your job titles. So the next one is end and end will allow you to search for several keywords in the profile. So you are not looking for an exact expression. You just want to 
uh, have several keywords operating on the on the job title or the profile. So here, let's say I want uh, people that are working uh, that are doing both sales and marketing in their companies. So I don't need to add quotes here because this is only one word. So I don't need uh, I don't need to add quotes, and I'm, I can write like sales and marketing. And LinkedIn will give me job titles with written sales and marketing anywhere. So it could be at the beginning, the middle, the end. We just need to have sales and marketing to appear. So here I have director of sales and marketing, head of sales and marketing, VP sales and marketing, general manager of sales and marketing, etc., etc. Sales and marketing director, director of sales slash marketing. So you can see that the job titles are different. The orthographies are different, but every time, I got the keyword sales and the keyword marketing. Last thing to know is that you can also use parentheses to give complex orders to the LinkedIn algorithm. So for example, here you can see that they have two parentheses with VP or head and sales or marketing. So what you do with parentheses here is that you combine the orders like in a mathematical equation, for example. Here in reality with this expression, I'm looking for four job titles. VP and sales, VP and marketing, or ad and sales, or ad and marketing. And to exclude some keywords, instead of writing not, 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 you can also write not, parenthesis, and then all your keywords with or between them. So a way to use the parenthesis is to like put all the position keywords into the first parenthesis, like VP or uh, head or a vice president or a manager, etc. You know, all the like position keywords, not like function related, but really position related. And then in the second parenthesis, you add all the function related keywords like marketing or sales or product, you know, like this. So first parenthesis, the position, Second parenthesis, the function, and then in the last parenthesis, you can add uh, all the, uh, the backlisted keywords with all between them. Okay, so now you need to know that the job title filter is not the only place where you can use Boolean search. You can also use it in the general keyword filter over here. But be careful when you are using this feature, and this is actually rookie mistake number three, because it looks absolutely into all the profile of your prospects, so skills, job description, schools, summary, headline, etc. So be careful when you are using this filter because um, the, the, um, the area where it looks for data is really broad. So I've taken an example here. So let's say you are rookie sales navigator users and you are like writing marketing into the, um, the keyword filter because you want some people working in marketing. So we are going to check the profile of Morgan here and you are going to see why the keyword filter can produce many unqualified leads in your search results. So here I was looking for the keyword marketing. So I'm going to control F and to look for marketing. And here I can see that the keyword marketing appear in the education field. Okay, so this experience in particular. But if I check the job experiences, I can see that yes, Morgan started to work uh, in marketing, but now she is actually a partner in a law firm. So totally unqualified lead. If I want to have some people working in marketing here, I have a, I have a lawyer basically. <laughs> so this is really, really irrelevant and unqualified lead. And that's what is really tricky with the keyword filter because it will look absolutely everywhere. Like here, the, the recommendation, the skills, the education, all every keyword here, every word that is appearing on your profile. And even here, summary, geography, everything basically that is on the HTML code of the page. So lesson here, guys, really be cautious when you are using the keyword filter and build your Boolean searches in a way that you avoid having profile like that in your search results. Now let's get back to our filters. Okay, so back to the role category with the seniority level filter and using the seniority level filter guys is rookie mistake number four because like the function filter, LinkedIn will try to guess 
your seniority level with your job title. So if you are a head of sales or a CEO, for example, they will put you into the CXO category. If you're a VP, they will put you into the VP category. But once again, this is decided by an algorithm that make mistakes. And I will show you an example right now, how a CEO can be classified as an intern by this algorithm. So I will look for a founder I know, which is a, a really good use case. So here we got someone that is founder and CEO. And if I open the seniority level filter here, you can see that this person is classified as owner, entry, so intern basically, or really, really junior, uh, senior and CXO. So four seniority level, but why? Because once again, this is the multiple experience problem. If I go to the Breeze profile, I can see that he gets four present experiences present here present here, present here, and present here. So you can see that one seniority level is attached to every experiences that is current. But if I go on seniority level and I select entry, so this founder and CEO is classified as an entry. And on the contrary, if I want to exclude, like let's say I make a search and I want, and I say like, oh, okay, I want owners, but I don't really want entry. You know, boom, you just made a founder disappear from a search. Whereas you was looking for owners and not entry. And here I selected owner, excluded entry, and I made a really good lead, a founder and CEO disappear from my search. That's why guys, there is two reasons why you shouldn't use this filter because the classification is bad and you may uh, delete some good leads and lose business because um, you delete some really good leads from your search results by using the seniority level filter. So lesson here, do not use the seniority level filter at all because once again, the seniority level is in the job title, guys. Why do you want to use function and seniority level if you have a job title? A head of sales is someone senior working in sales. A CEO is owner of the company. So job title is enough, function, seniority level in the trash. After that, you get years in current company and years in current position. So two use cases for these filters, guys. First one is you want to target decision makers that just arrived in a company. Let's say I'm a head of sales. And, you know, don't forget the quotes again here. I just arrived in a company. I can select here in the company less than one year. And delete the previous filters here. We can assume that heads off or VPs that just arrived in their company are much more likely to try new things, you know, or to hire an agency or to buy new tools to try new things because deep down, you know, they got something to prove to the management they just arrived. They got to show results quickly and they got to show that uh, they are making things moving, you know, they are trying new things, etc. So actually targeting people, uh, decision makers that just arrived into position is a really good way to add like leads that will be sensitive maybe to your arguments. Um, the opposite is to target people with enough experience to be credible. And that's the case with, for example, the CEOs, because right now any child in the mom basement can like create a startup and write on LinkedIn, you know, CEO and founder, but you want to, to talk to people with budget, with money to pay you, you know, so. In that case, if you are looking for CEOs or founders, my advice is to target people that, you know, I've built their business like for three years, maybe one or two years, but less than one year, I wouldn't advise you to, to, to target these people because, you know, if you build a business and you are CEO and founder of a company uh, that uh, have more than three years, obviously it should be profitable. Otherwise you would have stopped sooner, you know? So if you are looking yeah, for founders, try to, to target experienced founders so you don't lose time with CEOs or founders with absolutely no budget that are just getting started. Next, we have spotlights. And this one is really interesting because it's going to give you icebreaker ideas, basically. So if I click on it here, I can see people that recently changed jobs, that have been mentioned in the news, that have been posted on LinkedIn, that have shared experience with me that following my company. So this provide 
really good ideas to break the ice uh, when you are sending a first message to this person. So let's say, you know, you are selecting mentioned in the news in the last 30 days. You're going to see that here. If you click, I can see that Kieran has been entering the news. And the good thing is I can see the news. So I can check the article and maybe that will uh, be useful if I want to write my message later. If I click on post it on LinkedIn here, I can see the latest post of Kieran as well. So again, I can use this as an icebreaker in my messages, sending the link of the article or the link of the post and saying like, oh, congratulations, you just uh, achieved this, etc. So this can give you really cool icebreaker ideas. Next one is posted content. So this one, I think it doesn't work. It's broken because it's supposed to target like all the people that have posted or commenting a post containing these keywords. But if I write sales here, I present it, I only got 12 results. So it means that in the last 30 days on LinkedIn, only 12 people published a LinkedIn post with the keyword sales in it or commented this post. So it seems a, a really, really, really low number for me. Uh, the way this filter function is not clear at all, so my advice would be to not use it. And shout out to Sam here with the beautiful haircut. Okay, so next we have uh, the personal section. So here we got connection. This one is really important if you are doing LinkedIn prospecting because obviously you don't want to prospect people that are already in your network. And if you are doing prospecting and if you want to target people outside of your networks, people you don't know basically, uh, you need to select second and third degree connection because your first degree connection are people you are already connected with. This one is not so useful. It uh, allows you to see the common connection you have with someone. Maybe it can be useful if you want to leverage the connection with this person into a campaign. Like, uh, ah, I saw that uh, we both know uh, this person, etc. But doing this at scale, I don't know if this is going to work, you know. So, yeah, not so relevant. The next, we have geography. And what's really important here and what you need to know is that if you're targeting a region with Sales Navigator, you also need to select the biggest cities inside this region. Otherwise, you are going to lose people. Let's take an example with the New York City and the New York State. So here, okay, I'm selecting the New York State here, 10 million people. So you would assume that inside the New York State, there is New York City. So people of New York City are included into this list, but it's not the case. So if I click here and I had New York City, I got five more million results. <laughs> so if you only select the region and not also the city, you lose five million people. That's a lot, you know. So if you are targeting a region, make sure to add the biggest cities as well. If you are targeting a country, it's okay. But you are targeting a region, see on Google Maps the biggest cities in this region and also add them into Sales Navigator. Then we got the group filter and this one can be interesting because you can basically target people based on their interests. So let's say I got a product related to Facebook ads. I can look for a Facebook ad groups and I know that these people use Facebook ads and maybe they would be interested, you know, uh, in my product. And maybe I can leverage that in my prospecting messages as well, saying that I noticed that you were part of this group. Are you still interested in Facebook, Facebook ads anymore? Or is this something that you did like uh, five years ago and you are completely lost interest in it um, now? But it could worth it, you know, to, to, to like launch a prospecting campaign based on the uh, on groups to uh, do interest based targeting. OK, so after that, we get the industry filter. So this is where you can select a particular industry for your search. But using this filter, guys, is rookie mistake number five, because many people think that industry targets the industry of the companies your leads works in. But that's not the case. It targets the industry of the lead. And I will show you right now why it can cause many errors. So we'll go on my profile and you will be able to see that I've changed my industry for something totally not related to my activity, which is chemical manufacturing. And if I look for Everboot so I can find my profile here and I go to industry and I select chemicals, I can see my profile. So here LinkedIn thinks I work in chemicals. 
So if people are giving random information like this, it will produce many unqualified linear set results. And the thing is that many people confuse the industry for the department. Like for example, if I work in marketing for an e-commerce company, I could select marketing as my industry, whereas my industry is e-commerce, you know. So many people think that industry is department and if you select uh, and if you select e-commerce, first you will have irrelevant leads and second, you will lose people that work in e-commerce, but I've added marketing as an industry. So two effects, you have irrelevant leads and you lose some potential good leads. If the industry is an important criteria for you, you shouldn't use the industry filter here, but the account list filter here in the workflow section. So instead of using this uh, filter that doesn't work really well, you are going to follow this three step process. So first you are going to search for companies, then build an account list and then find decision makers inside these companies. So here you can see that if I click on account list, I can select an account list. So an account list that I've previously built here with some companies inside it. And basically when I select my account list here, on the right, I got all the people that are working in these companies. And the good thing is that I can add some lead filters on top of that. And for example, if I want all the CEOs of the companies inside my account list, I just need to write CEO in the job title filter. And here I got all the CEOs inside the companies of test account list here. So first step of the process is to go on the account tab and then you can play with the, all the, the account filters here. So you got the headcount, you got the end count growth, which is uh, interesting because you can target companies that are growing. So here I can target companies that have grown from at least 10% this year. And basically this figure will take the, the yearly growth rate. So this one here, you got six months, one year, two year, and the LinkedIn filter will take this one, the one year growth. And this is based not on the turnover, but the number of employees inside the company. Then you got the department headcount. If you want to target like uh, companies that have at least 10 sales uh, in the company, you can use this. You can target uh, departments that are growing. So is the company hiring more sales every year? You can see if the company is Fortune 500, not so relevant for the majority of us. Um, the headquarter location. Uh, in the industry here, uh, this one will be much more precise than the, the, the other industry for, for the lead because this will take the real industry of the company that is uh, entered by the creator of the company on the company page. So let's take the first results. Here you can see that. I have the industry here of computer software and it fits, you know, with the industry here because when you create a company page, you need to select an industry and most of the time you select the right one. So this will allow you to solve the industry problem on the lead search. And then you get number of followers, not so relevant, except if you would like to exclude page if with less than 100 followers that, you know, may be dead, but not so relevant. Then we get the technology used filter and this one guys is rookie mistake number six because there is absolutely nowhere on LinkedIn documentation where we can see how this filter works. So I've taken an example here where I'm looking for um, companies using Shopify, for example. So, and I'm going to compare it with a famous tool that is used to detect technologies on website, which is built with. So here, Sales Navigator is telling me that this company is using um, Shopify. So I'm going to take the website. So I'm going to paste the URL here and put it into a well-known tool to find a technology on the website, which is built with. And I'm going to do the lookup here and control F. And here I can see that Shopify is not detected by built with on this website. And if I take Another one, so Galeon project. Okay, visit the website, same thing. Copy paste the URL and put it into BuildWeave. You're gonna see if BuildWeave is detecting Shopify on this website, not this one as well. So this uh, filter is not uh, reliable 
And my advice is that you use tools that are built for that, which are uh, built with or Wopalizer, but do not use Sales Navigator to filter on technologies because um, this is not their speciality. This is not the main feature of Sales Navigator and this is not reliable. So next up, we have job opportunities. And this one is really interesting because you can see if uh, the company is hiring on LinkedIn. So this one as well is the like growth filter because if the company is growing like 10% and is also hiring on LinkedIn, it means that it is in good health and uh, they have the budget to pay you. And in the recent activities as well, you can detect if uh, it has been a funding event in the, in the last year. So this um, is an indicator of good health as well. And if I select the filter here, you can see like a fundraising has been mentioned in, in, a, in a website. You can see that MetaDataDio raised $40 million in Serie B. So this is also obviously an indicator that these guys have a good budget to pay you. And you can also see if there were some senior leadership changes in the last three months. So here you can select one senior leadership change and you can see that there is a new vice president of engineering. So if you are, uh, you know, selling products or services in this field, maybe this is a good opportunity to contact this person and you can easily do it by clicking on message here. So that was for the first step. So searching for accounts. Now you can create your account list. So Two ways to do that, you can end pick the leads here by clicking on the, the checkboxes or select all and save to list here and click on plus. And here let's say, okay, account list for the video and create and save. A little painful thing to do here is that you need to do that for every page. So you can select like all the results. You need to each time, you know, select all, save to list, account list for the video page three, do the same thing, etc., etc. So there is no way to automate that for now. Maybe Evaboot will do it in the future, but for now, this is a little bit painful, but honestly, this will only take three minutes of your time. Like just like click on the checkboxes every time. And once you have your list, you go back to the lead search and you're gonna go to the, let me delete that, go to the account list filter and select the account list you've just built. And here you will have the right industry uh, for these accounts. And then you can look for your ideal customer profile here. Head of sales, etc. Select a geography, like select, for example, like we, like we saw before, head of sales that just arrived um, in that company. And you have access to all the lead filters, but based on the people that are working in the companies in your account list. So that way you can avoid the lead industry problem and have the right industry, the right industry of the company. The good news is that you can also use this technique to exclude your clients and your competitors from your search results. So let's say you make an account search and you are going to, you know, um, search for, for the names of your, of your clients. So for example, your cotton fall is one of our clients. I can like create a list and name it like uh, blacklist clients because I don't want to prospect people that are already, you know, working with me. So blacklist client, I can do the same thing with my competitors and go back to the lead search, go into account list again and select my blacklist and exclude it. And here all the people working in the company, in my account list, will be excluded from a search result. So no risk for yourselves, for your business development team to contact people you are already in business with. And this is really important because you don't want to lose your credibility by prospecting people you are already working with. Okay, then you got first name and last name. Obviously totally useless, except if you want to know how many Johns there is on LinkedIn. So if you select the first name, and you are really bored at work, you can see that there is 3 million Johns on LinkedIn. That's a really useful information. Then you have profile language, so you can select people that have set their primary uh, language for their profile as English, for example. But many people, including myself, I think I set my, my profile uh, to English here yeah, and my co-founder as well, even as 
we are French. And then you got schools. If you want to leverage your alumni network, let's say I want to identify, you know, people that have been to Harvard and I'm targeting uh, an account like Microsoft. So I could contact these people and to leverage my alumni network to contact these people. And I can also leverage my alumni network to contact all the CEOs, all the head of sales that have been to the same school. Then you get years of experience. So this one can be really useful if you are looking for people with experience, but that change job often. For example, freelancers. Like freelancers on their LinkedIn profile, they will like add all the different experiences, but they will stay like one year or six months in each company every time. But they can have a lot of experience, you know. So if you want to target freelancers with experience, you can definitely use this filter. Once you have the perfect lead list, the next step for the majority of you will be to export the data outside of Sales Navigator into a CSV and to get the emails of your prospect, for example, to import the file into your favorite outreach tool or to pass the file to your sales team so they can start prospecting. The good news is that Evaboot is the perfect tool to do that in just two clicks. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so basically when you have downloaded the Evaboot Chrome extension and I will leave the link to the Evaboot website to download the Evaboot Chrome extension in the description, you have this new button here, Extract with Evaboot. So you just need to click on it here and this will open Evaboot and you will just need to name your search. So here I got adult cell from NYC. So I just select that and press Extract and the Evaboot robot will go to LinkedIn and extract all the information available on the LinkedIn profile and the LinkedIn company pages of your prospect. Then you will just need to wait a few minutes to get the results into a CSV. So here I already completed the extraction to save your time. And you can see that Evaboot has done several things. So first we have extracted all the data available and we have also cleaned the data. So here you can see that we have cleaned more than 300 cells. So these are like, um, you know, names or company names like emojis, typos, capital letters, etc. So we have normalized and clean uh, the names. And the second thing Evaboot has done is to double check all my leads to see if they really match my search filters. And here we can see that 74% of my leads really match my search criteria. So now I will open the file so you can see how it works. So we extract all the data available on LinkedIn, first name, last name, position, the company website, company domain, the location, the LinkedIn URL, industry, specialty, every data that is present on LinkedIn. And the cool thing about Evaboot is that on your left, you got the column here, match filters, yes or no. If I scroll down to the nose here at the bottom of the file, and I was looking for head of sales, right? And you can see that here I got all different uh, job titles like CBO, settlement agent, uh, member, head of leasing specialist. And Evaboot has detected that this is a wrong title, right? Because I was looking for head of sales. So we automate all the double checking work and you don't have to spend like hours on Excel um, opening the profile and saying like, oh, okay, this one is good. This one is not good. Evaboot is doing that for you. So this is the first step. And the second step is to find the emails of your prospect. So for that, really simple, you just need to click on find emails here and you can choose to enrich all the leads or only the qualified leads. So the leads that have been validated by the Evaboot filtering algorithm. So here I will enrich only the qualified leads. And then same thing, I just need to come back a few minutes later to get all the emails of my prospect. After a few minutes, if you go back on Evaboot, you can see that the emails have been added. And if I download the file here, I will only download the qualified leads. So if I open the file here on the right, you can see that all the emails has been added and verified by the Evaboot email finder. So in one click, you have extracted all the data you need from LinkedIn. And with a second click, you have added and verified all the emails so you can see that the process is really simple and if you want to try the tool you have 1000 free credits to try Evaboot for free
If you enjoyed this video on how to use Sales Navigator to generate leads, make sure to subscribe to the Everboot YouTube channel right now to get more actionable LinkedIn lead generation tutorials like this one. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. And if you want more details about all I've said, you can check the link to the blog post I've put in the first comments. And by the way, if you have any question, please ask them in the comments. I read and reply to every comment. If you want to dive deeper and become a true LinkedIn lead generation expert, my advice is to check this video here about LinkedIn account based marketing where I dive even further into LinkedIn and sales navigator features. This video will really help you get to the next level and get into the top 1% of sales navigator users. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one guys. Bye bye.